So joining me today, I have our fabulous NOSH trained nutritionist, Candice von Eden, who's always been part of what we do at NOSH, who's always been somebody who I turn to when I have questions that I want to ask, when I want to understand what we're doing better. And firstly, Candice, thank you so much for joining me. Hi there. Thanks for having me. Um, and what I wanted to do here is I wanted to, I know that when you say to people, right, we're doing a sugar-free challenge, we're going to say we're not going to eat sugar, there are always questions that come up. And what we want to try and do between us is today we're going to go through the five most commonly asked questions about how to, about how to live with and in a sugar-free diet and also what to do so that you can maintain it after you've finished that period of time, whether it's two days, five days, or 10 days that you're living sugar-free. Now, why do we need to do this? Because what actually happens is that when you eat sugar-free for a short period of time, that's a diet. And we all know what happens to diet. You fail, because it's just not something that works really well for you. But when you actually take on a lifestyle where you understand sugar, you understand how to live with sh without sugar, and in fact, why you would live without sugar, then what that enables you to do is you get tools to find an easier way to live. So, Candice, mm. I like sugar. Why do I have to give it up? This is the question that we're asked again and again and again. When I first start saying to people, I'm gonna do 10 days without sugar, people are like, um, you don't need to lose weight. Mm -hmm. So the common misconception is that you would only go sugar-free to lose weight, but that's not true, is it? No, that's not entirely true. And I think the most thing that people uh, realize with sugar is eventually they take a bit of an inventory of how much sugar they're actually eating and it's a kind of sneaky thing that sneaks up on you and also you lie to yourself about how much sugar you're eating yeah but the point is why shouldn't I eat sugar it tastes good because it's um, if you ever notice that you just don't quite feel right or you just don't have the right amount of energy um, and you feel kind of foggy headed or brain fog yeah, exactly. and sluggish and it's everybody knows when they've had too much sugar um, and you I find that thing where your mind goes blank yes and you're sort of sitting there saying um I was just trying to and that you know I find that that's really really difficult and when when you realize that you need more energy and you start using sugar for that energy for that quick energy it's not a a slow release energy it's a quick uh, quick burst of energy and then you're looking for that carby sugary type snack to give yeah. you that energy again to maintain it and to well be because fair, you crash afterwards don't you yeah to be fair most people need energy um, when they're in times of being really stressed out we tend to excrete more min minerals like calcium magnesium because we're working to higher capacities of stress um, and then um, sugar fills those those um, the empty calories but the quick fuel quite nicely for us when actually what we need is some really good nutritional density. So you're saying that in fact the reason we like sugar is because it tastes good because yes, and, and I mean actually it does doesn't it so we it all know that. It tastes good and it gives you a quick burst of energy. Right it gives you a quick burst of energy it tastes good generally speaking it's very easy to get a hold of and I mean you can turn into any corner and there will be a Starbucks there'll be a pret a -Manger, there will be the equivalent of a donut a pastry chocolate. you know chocolate you know all of that stuff there and not only is it there but it's right at your fingertips and it's very very cheap so when you do say to people let's give it up the thing with it that is that I'm not just talking about weight loss I'm talking about the fact that when sugar is found to have been 25 times more addictive than cocaine mm -hmm. they had a test where they put mice in it we have all of this information so if there's ever anything about this you want us to send you let me know but they put mice on a diet of cocaine and a diet of sugar and they found that the mice that were actually on the diet of sugar were 25 times more addicted and more willing to take pain to get to the sugar mm -hmm. than they were if um, they were on the cocaine. So that's actually petrifying. So that's the starting point. You're starting from the fact that actually that's just silly. I don't want to give it up mm -hmm. and really good reasons to not give it up. Now, what I find, give me some ideas of what you see. When people have been yes. eating too much sugar, I find their digestive systems don't work. Mm -hmm. I find they're really wired. They find it really, really hard to sleep. Yes. I find that because sugar Agreed. actually is so hard to recover from, I find that people actually get tired 
so much faster. Mm -hmm. What do you think? What do you what do you find are the two three most common things you see when people eat too much sugar? People are quite anxious, anxious. Yeah, they fret. They fret quite a lot. Yeah. Um, it's almost like uh, their their world revolves around their next snack and food, and get very tetchy if they haven't eaten. Um, you know, their blood sugar levels drop quite quickly, so they get quite angsty and angry, and, and they get a slump. And they get a slump. Yeah. So. Um, really low mood goes with low sugar um, it crashes from uh, high sugar high sugars then you get the low the low crash so you get the moodiness that goes yeah. with it yeah so if you have people around you and especially sugar. I mean there's a lot of sugar uh, there's a lot of sugar based behavior mm. that I think that we don't even notice because we've yeah. been eating it for so so long that so when long. you actually think you try and get people to not eat sugar <laughs> That's they you start notice. to yeah they start to find really good reasons why you should get hurt mm. okay so I hope we've picked on some of the things I mean sleep mm -hmm. sleep that's one thing that we really need to look at. When you've actually um, been eating a lot of sugar consistently, it's very hard to sleep easily. Don't you find that? People don't sleep through the night. Yes, no, definitely. Um, it affects your sleep. It's because it affects your hormones, basically. Ah, okay. So... Um, well, because of the insulin. The insulin. Mm -hmm. um, and so it, tell me about that. Talk and, to me about the process that happens. Yeah, so basically uh, insulin and glucose works uh, together to get the glucose into the cell. And once the, um, the, glucose needs, the insulin needs to be at the right levels uh, made by the pan pancreas um, for the glucose to be escorted into the cells of the, of the, of the body to be right. used as energy. Now, if we are eating too much sugar... Um, we have too much glucose in our blood and not enough insulin. Yep, to made, break it all down. To bring it into so the cells to be used. So you've got all this glucose flying around. So you've got all this glucose flying around, which is not only corrosive to the tissues of the body. Yeah, it's acidic. It's acidic, mm -hmm. so it causes any sort of type of joint pain. So mm -hmm. if you've noticed any uh, creaky, creaky joints, really swollen hands and feet, you feel quite swollen and puffy. Mm. Usually, can feel it in your ankles if you've eaten too much uh, sugar. I never thought of that. Um, just feel like your water retention because it yeah. has an affinity for water. Sugar does. Well, and also what the body does is when you get acidic and you've got too much sugar, the body makes you very thirsty because that water dilutes the acidity that the sugar yeah. is causing in the system as well. So the water, the water becomes a way of preserving the body, making it healthier. Exactly, and then um, generally, what tends to, with I mean, with a lot of people who are, are are doing this for quite a long period of time, they generally have an imbalance of good fats. So their cholesterol isn't um, isn't at the right levels, and then they've got too much sugar. So that's uh, upsetting another, um, you know, the the another the cholesterol uh, in your body. So. It's quite a fine balance between the different hormonal systems in the and body. And so what you're saying is that when you eat sugar and you start getting this, not only not enough insulin, but also too much glucose lying around, it's basically messing up your entire hormonal system. Yes, mm -hmm. over time. Right. So you've really got to catch it and nip it in the bud. Cause, um, and there are so many... So much information about too much sugar out there. It's about actually implementing it and starting it and integrating it. Yeah, into which your life. is which then takes us into the next um, mm -hmm. into the next question, really. And the second question that we've been asked by so many people is: Look, if I give up sugar, how am I going to keep up my energy levels? I mean, because we've talked already about the crash. So, how do people keep up their energy levels? Because you know, it's a commonly commonly held belief. Yeah, because is... when they have to let go of their sugar, they have to know. How are they going to keep up their energy? That yeah, they... so what, what, what do you have to say about that? <laughs> so, yeah, that is the, the million-dollar question, really, because you're going to cut out your sugar and you're going to feel very cranky for a short time. Yeah. But you're going to feel so much better in the long run. Um, so what we're saying is that actually is, is that giving up the sugar is not going to make you have less energy. No. But giving up your addiction to that crash and burn is going to make you feel uncomfortable uncomfortable yeah and, and, and you need to be annoyed. honest with yourself that you are going to feel uncomfortable for a short period of time but once okay what's a short period of time is it a day is it an hour um i would say at least a week Ooh. Three Which is to why five we days do ten day challenges because definitely it's going to go on for longer yeah mm -hmm. realistically three to five days to get you out of that 
energy crash feeling, brain foggy feeling. But you're not going to feel it all the time. You tend to feel it mostly in the mid-afternoon, which is when you're actually going to start crashing, aren't you? Yes. And that's when you go, we're going to give them some good tips. Um, so uh, really nutrient dense snacks. And so you, there is a way to balance it. Okay. Yes. Generally with protein uh, rich foods, which obviously it doesn't taste sweet. Um, so it's not going to be something that you would naturally reach for so you could have um, things like uh, a little quinoa pot a mini salad with some broccoli with some pumpkin seeds nuts or you could have some nuts with a tiny bit of dark chocolate or you could have uh, a piece of smoked mackerel for instance for the people who like fish um, so yeah there are options it's just about making those changes especially at about three o'clock in the afternoon instead of having that coffee with two sugars yeah, at four, we're going to get to that one. Yes. Not yet, because that one's a whole thing on its own. So we're saying that, first of all, the, it's a myth that sugar gives you energy. It helps you to immediately peak and then crash. That's true. That is not energy. Mm -hmm. To get actual energy that takes you through the whole day without crashing and burning, if you don't have sugar, when you've gotten the addiction to sugar out of your system, you're going to be absolutely shocked that you have a hundred times more energy than you have today because of several things. One, you're not going to crash because you haven't got that insulin spike and, and, and drop. Two, you're, not, you're going to sleep so much better and so you wake up more rested. Mm -hmm. And three, you're actually going to find that when you have, like Candice is saying, protein-rich, nutrient-rich food, what it does is it breaks down over a much, much longer period. So you feel much fuller and your energy is available to you over the course of the whole day. Yeah, the slow released energy, the nutrients. So anything that's nutrient dense, we will say that it has a really good nutrient profile. It's got calcium, magnesium, minerals, um, vitamin C. It's got a lot of comp different components, iron. Uh, uh, we'll talk more about the different sources. Yeah. But in this instance, I actually tend to go for stuff like when you said the nuts and the dark chocolate, I tend to make sure that what I'm doing is I'm eating protein and fat. Yes. I mean, like a good fat and a protein. Very good. Move on. That's the best thing to yeah, do. Because when you eat protein and fat, what actually happens is that you're really satiated. So you don't get hungry quickly and your mouth feels better. It's really weird. Your mouth kind of feels full and happy. And so you just don't get hungry. And it makes a huge difference, I think. Um, but then that takes us into the the next question. Can, because what I was about to say is I would also eat fruit. But um, people always go, but fruit has so much sugar. Why would you eat fruit? And then how on earth on a, on a low sugar diet would you be eating fruit? What would you say to that? Yeah, I mean, I choose my fruit quite wisely. So A, you can eat fruit. Yes, you yes. can eat fruit. Good, because fruit is not sugar. Because when you put a donut next to an apple, that becomes manifestly obvious. Yeah, exactly. Why um, is fruit not sugar, though? It's sweet. It's fructose, so it does get broke, broken down in the body like sugar does, but it's in a much slower way because it's, fiber. it's got fiber yeah. and it's fructose, it's not glucose. Yes. So it does take some a longer period of time to break down in the body, whereas um, white sugar would be um, 100% broken down as just pure sugar straight energy right in but a whole piece of fruit um as opposed eaten to the pre-chopped stuff that's been yes. sitting around and yeah uh, all that or stuff juice that <laughs> completely like if you have a completely fiberless concentrated juice yeah. it's you may as well have a, 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 a coca-cola yeah you may as well yeah and also what we're also saying is you can't have stuff like um the, <laughs> the ones i keep getting asked and particularly by my children is can i have the yogurt with fruit in it um no actually because that is so much sugar in that i was watching adverts today about the yakult and those what was the other one the bio the actimals actimel and stuff you've got to read how much sugar and fat there is in one of those things and we are not talking good fat in it's these not worth the the friendly bacteria that you get from no it. no just just paint the wall with it it's so much more efficient whatever <laughs> it's going to do so yes you can eat fruit um a b whole pieces of fruit c if you can make them organic 
all the better. Now, Candice, when you said this, you said you choose your fruit quite wisely. Talk to me about that. Yeah, sure. So when I start my mornings, um, I tend to go for the low GI fruits, mm -hmm. which are the berries. Mm -hmm. So blueberries, raspberries, strawberries, strawberries, cherries when they're in season. Mm -hmm. um, and then I'll have either a high fiber um, nuts and seeds or a type of granola with a bit of avocado. Mm -hmm. Um, if I have avocado at home and then after my sports workouts, I'll have a banana to replace the energy lost. And also cause it's a higher in GI, it's more fruit sugars in a banana, a ripe banana and potassium and potassium sweating. Yeah. Which is perfect. And I like to dilute my oranges. I squeeze them myself and dilute them with water, um, and use that to, to drink if I want a, a something sweeter as a and rehydrate post. yourself as and well. rehydrate sometimes mm -hmm. I add a, a pinch of Himalayan sea salt in that and mix yeah. it so you've got a bit of salt a bit of sugar your body just hydrates quite quicker from that um, and then in the afternoons apples or pears high fiber again eaten whole would say about four portions of fruit a day is for me is absolutely fine as long as you're active if you're having a not so active day um, rather have nuts and seeds, a bit of dark chocolate and two pieces of fruit. Uh, if you do, so you I know. do this. Yeah. So I do this quite differently to Candice because I ate, mm. I, I'm trained as a raw chef. So I ate raw for a very long time. And one of the things that I got really into when I was eating raw was mono fruit. And so that you would, you see these people, I'm sure if you've ever looked them up on the internet, they're really funny. They're these skinny, skinny, skinny people that eat enormous quantities of food and fruit. And you look at them and go, wow. So one of the ways you can do this is that if you're going to eat fruit and you want to eat like low GI fruit, um, or just being careful about how you eat your fruit, because fruit doesn't count as sugar, I will sit down. And if I'm eating a meal, which is fruit, I will have like, 10 times the amount of fruit that I would normally have. If what I'm doing is eating fruit as part of my meal, I eat like a handful of fruit. If I'm eating fruit as a meal, I will eat up to six or seven oranges. I will eat five or six mangoes. I'll eat in, in, in half wow. a watermelon. Yeah, That's enormous quantities. Hmm. Huge. I mean, yes, of course I work out and do that, but I've never had an issue with gaining weight from fruit when fruit is fresh, mm -hmm. it is um, whole, mm -hmm. and I'm eating one kind of fruit. Okay. So it's a really interesting approach. And I tried it a few times and sort of thought, can I, can't I? And in fact, I always lose weight on it. So I find I actually go back to um, eating fruit Very in a more... Very interesting. It's really, really amazing. And I go back to eating fruit in a more normal way because what that then does for me is I will put on a little bit more weight because I find I get too skinny. Mm. But monofruit as a meal concept, I am always trying to teach... Um, especially if you go raw. Mm. So if you're eating fruit and you're eating salads and, you eat, and raw, you have to eat like three times your normal diet. Yes. You simply don't get I enough have, calories. Yes. I've done that for short stints of yeah. time. And you definitely need to ramp up as much. You eat way more uh, much, much quantities more. of fruit and vegetables than you would normally. Yes. When you add fruit with other stuff, you eat much less of it. But when you actually eat fruit on its own or raw fruit on its own, you eat enormous quantities. Yes. So people will eat a little salad. In fact, I've seen you with bowls of mango in the office before. <laughs> yes. I've Big got bowls of mango. Huge bowls. And I take like these bowls as big as my head and I've got mangoes <laughs> in there and I'll eat the whole thing and people will look at me and I'm like, but this is my, I mean, I've barely eaten 200 calories and I'm having to pile uh, it's not really painful, but I'm having to really pile on the fruit in order to get the calorie intake because otherwise you're not eating enough calories, which is why so many people actually crash and burn on these diets. Because when you give up things like very dense, sugary foods, you feel hungry. Now, it's not actual hunger. One of the things it is, is a, you're, you're missing the food. So it's a detox. So it's not always hunger. Drink water instead. And secondly, you could just not be eating enough calories. This is the, the one and only time in life you really need to eat more than you ever think you would need to eat because you're not getting enough. Hmm. I see that. It's, re it's really interesting. So definitely eating fruit. Yes, you can eat fruit. So don't see fruit as sugar. It's a different... It's fructose. Yes, it gets broken down as sugar. It gets broken down at a much slower pace. And because of the fiber, it gets broken down um, and releases energy in a longer, more sustainable way. Much more. Okay, so the next thing then, which leads us quite into... Actually, so what food is sugar? Do you know what I mean? Like what food, if you're on a low sugar diet or giving up sugar, what would you not eat? Because instinctively you would think, oh, well, I'll give up sweet potato. But 
that's not really what we're saying in a way. Well, I'm sure I'm sure most people have got into a position where they're having a few biscuits at work. Yeah. That's a very, you know, easy one to point out. And maybe that cereal you have every third day could be a Kellogg's brand or a Oh big... my god, there's so much sugar in them. The sugar in them is absolutely insane. Almond milk and soya milks. Yeah, almond milk, soya milks, even dairy milk is broken down quite quite high and lactose is quite sweet in the body bread and pasta bread and pasta main culprits very easy for the body to break down uh, in and, terms and of, create sugar and create sugar in mm -hmm. the body because it's been so refined mm -hmm. so we're saying Sources. you should give up all refined products yeah and processed processed refined take out anything that you need to warm up in a microwave or heat up in terms of a ready-made meal definite no-no i'm sure there might be one or, you know, once a week that you have something that you use as convenience food, basically. And also that thing where people eat salads and then the dressing yes. is chock-a-block with um, sugar. Yeah, if you eat out at, um, you know, the chains out that, that you could go and have lunch in, if you, um, some of them are good, but some of them definitely have um, salts, sugars, uh, quite heavily refined. Yeah, just go for olive oil, lemon, salt, and move on. Because yeah. actually, you don't need anything else. Other the than more that. naked your food, the better. Yes. Yes. And then also, what about um, like in terms of vegetables? What should people? What vegetables should they be avoiding? Yeah, sure. Before I just go to vegetables, there's also that tea and coffee. Some people like their sweet. Yeah. You can't have a coffee without a sugar or two in their coffee. Yes. So how many hot drinks are you drinking a day and actually physically adding sugar to? So there's that as well. Well, there is. So can we talk about that for a minute? Because what yeah. then people do is put artificial sweeteners in. Yes. Can I just literally point out how bad Splendor and all these artificial sweeteners are for you? Yes, and especially I mean, tonic. To eat a donut instead. Even the sparkling waters in the supermarkets. <gasps> oh no, and tonic water. And tonic tonic water. water. I love tonic water. No gin and tonic. By the way, did we mention alcohol is full of sugar? So, yes, and alcohol and makes you crave sugar as well. So you know, quite easily you're stacking up. I'm pretty sure you can. You can point that, out. That, that would be the whole of tomorrow screwed, basically, here, guys. I just would like to point out you can't have anything here. Your cereal is dead. Your pasta lunch and salad with the dressing is dead. Your mid-morning snack is dead. Protein and bars, the your, quick, your quick snacks like oh that. Oh, my gosh, yes. And then your drink um, in the evening is now dead. <laughs> your, so we're just saying this is we, you aren't allowed any of this stuff because it's not actually working for you. It's not working for you in the long run. It needs to happen once a week if you're going to have, you know, a, a night where you're going to indulge in a glass of wine or two. Um, it needs to be some sort of balance. But the 10-day 10, the 10 day challenge is definitely a good place to start to see where you're going to cut this sugar out um, and improve yeah. your energy at the same time. Okay, so instead of that, let's just say we've got about, we've got a few minutes left here now. Um, we Why don't we look at... What can people do? We've given them all the bad news. We've given them all the good news about how they're going to feel afterwards. Why don't we just spend a few minutes now talking about what we would have in your ideal day when you were on a low sugar way of eating? Yeah. What would you start for breakfast? Sure. So um, a good place to start with your breakfast would be to clean out your cupboards and your fridge and make sure you've got some good options in there. So yeah. like you say, your good fats, you've got some avocados for the week ahead, you've got some good nuts and seeds. Um, raw. Raw. Uh, sunflower seeds would be fantastic to add to your breakfast. Pumpkin seeds. Yeah. Chia. Chia. You could make yourself a bircher muesli. Very easy to mm -hmm. make. Um, so chunky rolled oats soaked overnight with some grated apple and some plain organic yogurt or um, with no added sugars in it. So the, the actual sweetness is coming from the grated apple throughout. Cinnamon adds a great touch of sweetness if you like your you're going to crave your sweetness in the morning berries yep i, I would do fruit berries. i would do mono fruit and an enormous quantity of them okay just sit down and eat uh like okay. five oranges wow 
Great. Yeah. Okay. I'll, I'm going to give that a You've go. You've got to try it. It is absolutely amazing. And it really is one of those things where, like, when I travel on flights, mm. so I'm actually getting on an airplane tomorrow. Mm. So I'm going to try and do a whole low sugar thing while I'm traveling. But what I do when I get on airplanes is I have a bag. I, I am totally the bag lady. <laughs> I have a bag where I will have five or six oranges. I will take some bananas, but they tend to get bruised. And I will get on the airplane. And because I'm bored and it's hours and hours, I sit there and I start cutting my oranges and I eat them and I eat oranges for about an hour and a half <laughs> and then I move on to whatever the food is that I've taken with me which is usually then I move on to a salad and then I move on to whatever like nuts and stuff but that's what I do on airplanes okay great yeah I mean try the mono fruit then give give yourself a, a good uh, you've got to eat a lot of yeah. it you just eat so much more than you think you need mm -hmm. because um you, you, otherwise it doesn't work because you get hungry again in I like see. 10 minutes and I you see. don't have enough calories it takes a bit of practice i guess it really does take a little bit of practice and having um, the prep of having the salad with you just in case you need a top up precisely so there's also for people that like savory breakfasts mm -hmm. you can do things like egg and, and oily fish yeah eggs oily fish mackerel a um, piece of smoked salmon if you wanted um chickpea can we do chickpea flat uh, pancakes yeah and things? chickpea pancakes buckwheat pancakes um flaxseed pancakes flaxseed pancakes yep very which good. i tried today and i failed they look like omelets not like <laughs> pancakes but they tasted fantastic great yeah great um yeah nuts and seeds generally you know you can incorporate them into your pancakes so if you've got ground flax seeds or ground nuts um in terms of like the linwood's packs are great with uh, ground brazil nuts and walnuts and you add a couple of teaspoons into your batter of yeah. your of your pancakes the slow release energy is absolutely fantastic it's so good for the brain i can't tell you yeah i know it is and then half an avocado with some sunflower seeds on uh, a touch of tamari soy sauce if you have any um if for savory breakfast um and then again one of my favorites is just plain organic yogurt with berries and then I do tofu with a little bit of turmeric, Ooh. a little bit of soy, a little bit of brilliant. Um, yeah, and I mix that with um, kind of whatever else I have lying around. I put a little bit of salt, and it looks like scrambled eggs, but it's vegan. And it's you know, if I've got raw t raw tofu, it's a raw raw breakfast. And then, guys, the best tip I can give you here is hold off your coffee. Don't have it first thing in the morning. Have it after your breakfast. The first thing in the morning should be about hydration. You've just slept for a long period of time and have your coffee after your breakfast. Why? Um, just in terms of hormonally, again, it pushes up cortisol, adrenaline, first thing in the morning. So it's not killing your system. So it's not killing your overdrive. And your also system. it's not a meal. I used to do tea and coffee, not coffee really, but teas. I used to drink tea when I was hungry because mm. it would fill me up. And yeah. I'm kind of like... Uh, but for a very short time, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's really not a meal. You yeah. know, you need to kind of work out why yes. you're drinking it. And that's why. Um, in that case, you may as well have some hot water because it will literally have so much more benefit, but the same effect. Okay, so we've done breakfast. So what are we going to do for lunch? So lunchtime, I would keep it light. Um, so salads, uh, steamed fish, if you can, um, different types of salads. There's so many great salad recipes out there. You could use things like buckwheat. You could use things like um, um, bulgur wheat. You could use things like amaranth, millet. Well, and also if you're out and you can't make the stuff, you can do sushi without the rice. Yeah, yep. you can do the sushi would really, really yeah, work for you. Yeah, sashimi. You could go a uh, sashimi rather. Yeah. You, there goes the vegetarian here. Not, miso soup. Miso soup is fantastic. You've got a lot of the chains have really, really fantastic, really big chopped raw salads with nuts and seeds. Mm -hmm. You can have those. Exactly. Acai bowls and things like that work as well. Exactly. And if you feel like, you know, you're starting to crave sugar at that point, make sure you've got like some apple cut into your salad or some pomegranate seeds thrown on top of your salad. It really helps with that kind of craving of you wanting something sweetness afterwards. But then have a piece of fruit after your after your lunch as well. So yeah, light steamed fresh soup, salads, if that yeah. makes sense. The mid-afternoon, your mid-afternoon break is going to be nuts, 
It's going to be um, actually. And the thing is, you know, don't forget nut butters. Nut butters are fantastic things when they're properly made and they're not stuff that you've bought that has so much rubbish in them. I use a lot of nut butters in celery sticks. I use nut butters on apple. I use nut butters on just about anything. And I love them. They're really filling and they take me through, uh, you know, the, that bit where it's, you know, dinner doesn't look like it's coming anytime soon and I still haven't finished what I'm doing <laughs> yeah no that's a great tip actually Gita the the almond uh, butter on apple slices very good you're not eating crackers you're not eating bread no as a snack you're going in for something you know you're using your carbohydrates snacky as as either carrots or apples or celery sticks great way to hydrate as well as add extra nutrients from fresh food completely and by the way you know I will happily eat 10 slices of the apple with some butter. I really will. I just think that you need to understand that you can eat more than you think you can eat because of the way in which you're eating. Sure. I mean, have you? how many of us have gone there and seen really skinny people eating enormous meals and we want to kill them? Mm -hmm. And it's because they can actually eat that because what it's doing is revving up your metabolism and making it work for you. So we're at dinner now. Some solutions for dinner. Yeah, so dinners, um, again, ch take an inventory of how, how active you were that day. Yeah. If it was a gym day, by all means, have a little bit of something more substantial in the evening. Could be, um, you could steam some sweet potatoes or that's absolutely fine. On a low fine. sugar diet? Yes, you could. Yeah, I would. I would. If I had a workout in the morning and I was quite an active day for me, I would say a, like a medium-sized sweet potato with a piece of fish or a salad. Um, a, the sweet potato could be tossed through the salad with the tahini dressing, for instance, which just create a, uh, a little bit more interest for your salad. I have to say that's absolutely a staple of mine. I take tahini because it's my source of protein, and I do tahini, yeah, and I do tahini with lime, soy sauce, mm. and coriander, Perfect. and a little bit of grated, um, like like literally the grated the lime and the grated lemon rind. Uh, lime rind and I put that on top of greens and mm. stuff and I'm, I, I'm very happy mm. but really really filling as well and yeah. satiating and then if you put avocado in there that's a completely balanced really? meal the best lentils tip, yeah lentils fantastic dal yeah and... dal all kinds of lentils legumes yeah um, best tip I can give people here is fill up on your veg so don't yes. just have four florets of broccoli that's just ridiculous just have a whole broccoli head. Steam it. Yep, I do that. And eat the whole thing. Yes. And it's filling. It's, you don't need anything else other than that with actually a little tomato salad or something else on the side. But you sit down and eat your whole steamed broccoli head. Organic, lovely, bright green. Your body will just... And, and if you dip it with tahini, you've actually got your protein and your greens and all of your stuff in one go. And you can get up feeling stuffed, but deeply, deeply superior. Yes. So I hope we've answered your questions i hope that it's been as interesting and fun for you as 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 it has been for us we will be doing this again soon we will be having these conversations again soon if you have some more questions about this talk to us because actually we're coming up to winter we're coming up to where we want denser sweeter foods understand that there are so many different options to give you more control over how to eat this are we saying we will never eat a donut no we're not actually although i cannot remember the last time i did because i don't actually like don't them anymore them. yeah which is really annoying okay. but you know kit kat i have to tell you kit kat Oh my gosh, Kit Kat is just one of those things. But you know, <laughs> chocolate, I like chocolate. But if I want it, I'm going to eat it. I never have to think about that because 99% of the time, I'm actually eating something which works good for me. But you're not using it as an energy source. I'm not. You're not going to it because you need it. You're going mm. to because you're going to have a piece. You're going to enjoy it. Uh, yeah, and I, that I means I eat little of it and then I'm done. Yeah. It also usually is hits it? me around 5 o'clock when I'm uh -huh. thinking, no, but not because I need it for energy. I'm like, okay. oh got another mm -hmm. hour and a half here mm -hmm. what can i do and so that's a bad way to do it. that's probably when i should be eating my apple and my butter mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But you're being honest as well so it does happen but it's like it's not a mid-morning type thing you no know? never yeah. Ooh, ew yeah. chocolate yeah. in the morning gross yeah some people do that i don't. know i see people going to work with a coke mm -hmm. in their hand you know who you are could you please Even not do that coke, it's Ew, particularly don't drink Diet Coke. Drink the Coke if you must. Don't drink that, that horrible cancer-inducing aspartum that's in the Diet Coke. It's not good for you. So, Candice, thank you so much. That was a huge amount of fun. 
It was really great talking to you guys. This is Gita Sidhu Rob along with Candice von Eden, and we hope that you have the best time going sugar free. <laughs>